Is it the responsibility of the military alone? It's the responsibility of everybody to keep alert and find safety when necessary. But we shouldn't be cowards. At times, the banditry will come only come with about three rounds of ammunition. One day, fire shot. Everybody runs. In our younger days, we stand to fight any aggression coming to us. I don't know why people are running away from me, mano, 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 thing like that. They should stand and let this, uh, let these people know that even the villagers, they have the competence and capability to defend themselves. But our own duty is to ensure no Nigerian is hurt and we are capable of pretend, uh, protecting the integrity of this nation. And we will continue to do it. Well, that was the Defence Minister months ago. But now, the pan-Yoruba social political organisation Afeni Fere has urged Nigerians to defend themselves against bandits, warning that Nigeria is fast moving into the precipice. Afeni Fere also expressed worry over the worsening security situation in the country, noting that it is threatening the corporate existence of the country. Now, joining us to discuss this is Head of Research at the Act for Positive Transformation Initiative, Kalawale Johnson. It's good to have you join us, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. It's, inc it's interesting that we're beginning to hear this more from leaders and not just normal leaders of thought, our political leaders. Uh, a few weeks ago, the, the governor uh, of Katsina State had also come up to say, that, my, that the people in his state should, you know, um, resort to self-help. And months earlier, we had the defense um, minister also saying that we can, uh, you know, we should not be cowards, that we can actually defend ourselves against this bandits. And here we are today, the Afeni Fair is also calling on Nigerians to resort to self-help. What does this really mean if everybody seems to be saying the same thing? Are we really failing to win the war against terrorism in Nigeria? It will be wrong to say that we have failed, uh, but uh, perhaps we can rightly put it that we are failing. Uh, until you have the final closure in the feet, you may not be able to say that we have failed. However, with the pointers, with the indicators, clearly shows that we are not winning the war, that we need to do more. We need to come up with strategies. We need to uh, act decisively. Unfortunately, uh, let me take you back history lane and to clearly let you know that uh, uh, we didn't get here by accident. We get or uh, we arrived at this deadly spot we are now at this precipice simply because we didn't do the right thing at the right time. My job trains me to be able to extrapolate and look into some few years to come and be able to make some forecast based on present uh, 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 circumstances and situations. So four years ago, 2016, I remember June 12th, on a national program to mark the day, I was among the panelists, and I clearly told Nigerians that within the next four years, we may be entering into some very dangerous zone for us as a country. We may be uh, having situations that may consume the country if the country fails to act at that time. Now, you would understand the fact that when you do not decisively deal with issues, issues that are not dealt with decisively in good time would always dovetail to crisis. Mm -hmm. And when you have crisis situations in your hands, you can have a foolproof solution. Every solution on the table will have some consequences and some adverse effect. And now you need the balls as a leader at such time to take hard decisions, knowing well that leadership, providing leadership at critical times is not, uh, I mean, it's not a popularity contest. It's a contest to do the right thing. Now, I remember those days in Lagos when, uh, 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 when, uh, Fashola just became the governor. Now, he took some decisive steps. And I remember that everybody, practically everywhere, who was being booed. Some were even cursing him. But go down memory lane, two years into that administration, he started earning accolades, practically from across the country. Now, what does that tell you? You can take decisive decisions 
at, at the right time, even if it is not popular. But later, the people will come to say that you, you took the decision for the large, I mean, for the good of the larger majority. So if but I, if I, unders and, uh, if I understand so, you, I'm sorry to... This okay. Let me land on this thought, please. Clearly, you will see that this government failed to take the right decision at the right time. So it is the inaction of the government that brought us to this point. And I cite for you two instances. The first, when we started having had, uh, uh, killer herders invading farms and killing farmers unnecessarily, destroying their produce, rather than having an action from the government, you can see a ton of support for these herders. Clearly, the presidency keeps supporting them, and it got to a point that they target herders' famous clashes. How can you call that clashes? How can you call those things clashes when they go to meet people in their farms and kill them? That's not a clash. That is terrorism. Now, again, we have these guys infiltrating into communities and burning down communities, killing people, taking over some communities. You know what the government said? They called them bandits. Now, when they became notorious, taking over the highways, demanding ransom each time they pick people, killing professors, killing people in their prime, raping women, you will hear that the government will come out almost defending this action. Take, for example, in Ondoste, when the governor said that we need to reach uh, the forest of elders that come to the ministry so that those who are hiding, those criminals who are hiding among you to perpetrate this bastard act, we can fish them out. You had an immediate release from the presidency, not just condemning the governor, but defending this elder, whereas when they kill, they don't come out to do that. However, have you seen that each time the government defends them, they grow more balls and they become bolder? Um, no. I don't. I don't. I do not. I do not know if the government really defends them, but I, I'll let you dis be the deciding, um, you know, person on that. But let's backpedal. I remember when this started, and, and it was just pockets of violence. At the time, the Sultan of Sokoto, uh, Al Haji Saad Abu Bakr, had said, and I quote him, that these people who were um, engaging in this dastardly act were not Nigerians. And there were questions that were posed as to why we would allow outsiders to come in and kill our people. That's that. We also know about the guns that are the gun running around the Sahel region and, and how these things are coming towards, you know, um, the, south, the, the western part of Africa. We're seeing it happen even in the countries at the fringes of the Sahel. So you have also already stated that if government had acted early enough, we would have been able to deal with the issue. But... We're no longer there. We're here now. And where we are now seems to be worse than where we were before. So the, the question again is, is it still government's willingness to fight and put an end to this that is our situation right now? Or could it be that there's more to it? Now, there are also people who think that we have overly politicized this issue and it's made it even more difficult for us to be able to pinpoint what the problem is and deal with it. What are your thoughts? My thoughts? Simple. See, um, everything rise and fall on leadership in a society. And this, this, this matter is as simple. I have an opportunity to contribute to public discourse, different for us. And I can trace back the days of warning, even to date, and tell you clearly that the government has not done enough, and clearly if the government is willing to win the war today, we can win the war. But, but listen to how, I mean, to why we can win the war. Please permit this example. What exactly did we uh, brand IPOP for as a terrorist organization that we have failed to see the fact that bandits are doing much more than that. However, the government cannot come out with the balls to label these guys. Yet Nigeria is the second most terrorized nation in the entire world. And guess who are those contributing to this indices that has made Nigeria the second most terrorized nation? The bandits involved. Yet we can label them terrorists. Aside from that, 
you 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 will have sitting governors defending them and saying that no, they are bandits. They are only doing business. That that after all, they are not requesting uh, to secede from the nation. Now, such utterances will keep emboldening these guys. Perhaps in another time, when we have the time, I will take you through some processes in PR that affect. Uh, 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 affect criminality in the society. I can take you through the operant conditioning learning, uh, yes, by B.F. Skinner, be, and the classical conditioning learning by Bandura. Now, you will but see be, that... But because we do not have time, I'm, I'm going to push you just to... Because my, my guys are saying we have to go. Um, so, with all of these things, we're still talking about the problems. This solution that seems to... May not be I'll, a solution. No, I'm giving you a solution. Yeah, yeah. the government go the balls to do the right thing. That's the solution. So, but while we wait, do we resort to self-help? And how can we be, how can we protect ourselves against people who are wielding um, AK-47 uh, and some of them riding in numbers in, in 300s and more? How do we intend to do that if even the, the NDA had been, um, you know, raided by these same people? Is that really a great call, especially coming from the Afeni Fair? Hello? Can you hear me? Oh, yes, I can hear you. I know. In closing, I was because, to say that because we we're cannot, going. Yeah. Yeah, we cannot protect ourselves against criminal state. This is the job of the state. Now, what exactly will be the job of the state? A lot of people provide their own amenities. They roll in their estate. They provide their electricity. They provide their water. And yet, yet they pay taxes to the government. So what exactly will be the job of the government? The number one job of any government is the security of the life and properties of the people. Yet you say the people should defend themselves. The folks and the Minister of Defense himself said this, and he, he was... He was practically calling us cowards. That I can we be running, you know, for some tattered looking criminals uh, 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 with few AK-47. And, and the question I asked him then was simple. Can you go about in those places without having your escort, without having the soldiers guarding you? No, he cannot. A lot of times, many of them can't even travel to you their settlements, their villages. To where they come from. So mm. clearly, we cannot defend ourselves. And I am, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm also a bit disappointed in our How can you be calling on Nigerians to defend themselves when the same person that you guys prepped up to defend you, to defend himself, when he was taken, what were they doing? Did they call me? Did they move immediately for the government um, uh, 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 to release those guys? Now, what exactly did that guy do wrong? A lot of them, they prepped him up. They pushed him to that level. Now, okay. thank God, we it was never on record that I supported that move. However, when he was, I mean, when the government moved against him, you were expecting groups like Afeni Ferry to move against the government immediately. But okay. they never did. Yet, yet, they are coming out now to say people should defend themselves. How would they defend themselves to go by gun and also be charged for illegal, I mean, we um, have to go. Or a legal possession of arms. That's not possible. Well, Mr. Kalawale Johnson, time is not on our side. He is the head of research at the Act for Positive Transformation Initiative. And he's been speaking to us live from Abuja. Thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you. All right. Thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short, quick break and bring you a report on what Nigerians or how they feel about credible elections. If they follow the electronic, uh, like the Western world, I think you understand. I think they will achieve a good election research. In Nigeria as a whole, all the elections we've been doing so far, people's votes don't count. That is nothing but the truth. People's votes don't count. But then, if they can listen to the masses and at least carry the masses along and do what is good and do what is right, then everybody is good to go. Everything will work out fine. But whereby everybody goes in there for their selfish interests, then it doesn't make sense. Well, let's even get over this COVID first. After this COVID, we start thinking of, we are talking about survival here. So, yes, of course, uh, free and fair is all about uh, transparency in the process and the procedures put in place by government to ensure that people's life are safeguarded while voting and that there is no um, cause for alarm in terms of chaos in the respective uh, ballot uh, station, uh, stations. 
whereby we, we know we've had so many cases of theft of ballot papers and all that. So all those things should be, you know, guarded against to ensure that the elections are free and fair. Uh, I don't know if it's possible to do the online voting, if it's safe to do the online voting. The ones that can come out to vote can come out. If you can do it virtually, then I think it's okay. Well, I guess security, like security level, the, increase the, um, what called name, um, the country security. If you increase the country security, then I guess at least during the election, things will be balanced at some point. That is... I guess constitutional reform should be forced, then online voting should be put in place. I think there should be transparency you know, on, on everything. I think basically that, that's just that's just all. And, and, and you know, we, with that, I think that, that that's all. If there is transparency and, and, and the government should try to have the, the love of the people. For people to come out during election and also defend their votes, you know. Uh, you know, because most times where you have, or whenever you have rigging things, you know, it's because a lot of people don't believe in the electoral system. They believe rigging will always take place. Well, that's all we have for you tonight on the show. We'll see you tomorrow again on Plus Politics. I am Mary Anacorn. Have a good evening.